What's up guys and gals, it's time for us to hang out for a little while and play some renowned explorers. My name is Splattercat, happy to have you here today. Let me look at my entourage. One thing that I would suggest for the developers is maybe make a little table on the side right here that tells you everything you're getting for each type. Just a little thing that I would think about adding maybe because it would help out. Because right now I'm trying to decide what I want to spend my insight on. And it'd be nice to have this tabulated for me so that I could figure out which cards are best to flip in order to get the most mileage out. But anyways, welcome back to Renowned Explorers. That's just one little thing that I've noticed so far. I would love to have a little table right here, maybe on this side, or something that tells you what your helpers are providing as a total. So we just have them all kind of pooled on the side or something. We've got a little bit of money right now. Not a lot, but I'm thinking it's probably a decent idea. What treasures do we have? So we got our treasures right there. Our helpers, obviously we have a few of those. The news is the last thing. Okay, so with Revolo and all that kind of stuff. Let's level up Templeton first, I guess. I think he's going to be... Why are you not... Go away, window. Why are you bothering me right now? On this side, he gets Deride, which gives him 125% speech power, hit chance 100%, range 2 tiles. Target becomes enraged if it's negative, so it's basically the same thing that he did. And then this also heals him for the amount of damage that he inflicts. He can go with the right mindset, which means that his group insult... Deals 25% power if he's got a positive state of mind, or he can go with group insecurity, which means that the group insults buff gives the target an additional minus 10, minus 10. So we can make it deal more damage, or we can make the debuff stronger. With how sort of multiplicative, like um, the minus 20 armor, I don't know if it's linear or not, but I've noticed that if you lose minus 30 armor, it's kind of a big deal. It's really, really bad. So let's go ahead and take group insecurity for right now. I think that'll be nicer, and it doesn't rely on the fact that he has to be in a certain mindset before we can accomplish our task. So he's got Deride now, and so that heals him for a bunch. So that's going to be a nice little way to kind of hit the enemy and get health at the same time. I love abilities that do two things simultaneously. On this side, so for Chronicles. I'm going to go with Tales to Tell. Anna's thinking on how to improve your study. She has a few options. We can get more research from study. We can get more status, but that's got a zero in it. So I would never take the zero for one. Statistically, that's kind of like a zero-sum wager right there. You'll either get nothing or you'll get plus one to your research every time you use it. Whereas these right here, you're at least guaranteed a two of something. I'll take gold from studying. On this side, for 30 research, we can take fame and fortune. So I'm going to take that right there. Anne's brilliance has led to more, fo or more status from study. Okay. And we also get 50% more benefits from encounters. So just keep that in mind. All crew members gain 10 attack and 10 speech. That's pretty good. But exploit emotions. You can choose one emotion which will have a stronger effect. A selection window will come up. I don't know if I want the resolve or not. If I take the resolve, let's say that I take the resolve, I can then open up another window. So we can go with two study from doing study jobs with insight. Okay. We are aggressive. So I think going with aggressive upgrades might be a really, really good idea. And then from there, we can go for these two, and we can try and fill out this tree. I don't think the 10% extra attack is going to be that great anyways, because most of the time... Like, I think most of the time you hit for, like, 20 of damage, so it's just 2 extra damage. That's not going to be enough to, like, resolve an encounter or anything like that. We do have some gold to spend. We do have some insight. I would think that I would like to spend insight on... Let's, let's lecture in London, I guess. Actually, no, let's not. We're not getting great rewards out of there. So we can get two from right there, and through research, we might be able to get three. But that decide we got to decide if we wanted to get campaign or if we wanted to get... Yeah, let's get campaign. We'll take that right there. It'll give us a little bit more... Yeah, that'll... I mean, it's not the best choice. I probably should have gone with research because that'll give us long-term benefits. But I'm okay with how things are going right now. I'm not going to cry about it. I mean, we're probably going to lose this one. Eh, let me go back to the world map. I wanted to spend some money real fast. Let's go to the red square and take the item shop here. I think it's probably a really, really good idea. So for him, what does he like? He's got a translation guide, which makes him a better diplomat. Okay, and so that's 150 gold right there. Go ahead and take that. I'm going to upgrade the store real fast with the extra stuff that we just gleaned from before. It's going to give him more speech power. It's not that useful. If I could afford better gloves for everybody, we'd be in better shape too. Although...
Let's go with a couple of mementos right here. If I can sell that guy, I can get two mementos out. We could put in a memento right there for speech defense. And we could put in a memento right there for speech defense, which will even us out a lot more. Because some of these characters have pretty major issues getting things done. It's not going to leave us with a lot of cash. Our resolve went up as well. Did I take that resolve ability? Is that why that went up? Did I take resolve in this menu? I did. Okay, so I was playing it a little bit safer. That's fine. Some people that are good at the game will say that's a dead point, but... We can go to the Highlands. We can go to the Memphis Desert. Or we can go to the Caribbean. I'm going to do... Let's go to Memphis. I've never done Memphis before, so this will be a little bit more fun. It'll be something blind. The War Temple of Sekhmet is said to be hidden in the desert sands. Exploring the desert will be really hard on your supplies. Archaeologists, athletes, survivalists, and rogues will help. Rumor has it there is a lot of gold to find. Unlocks insight jobs in Africa. Well, if there's something that better matches our skill set here... It is said that a historic Scottish relic is being held by a paranoid abbess. Friendly approaches make things easier. Beguilers, diplomats, athletes, and engineers will prove useful. Okay. We go to the Caribbean island here. Let's see. Aggressive approaches are easier. This will be for pirate treasure. Nature, challenges, and techniques. And a lot to study for research. Shit, I should have done this one previously. But this one has a bonus to aggressive resolutions, and so... Finally, you can start your search for Roke's treasure. The treasure once stolen from the Spanish Silver Fleet should be somewhere on this pristine and beautiful island. Anna looks at the map you got from Pinkerton to find out where, a place near a waterfall. I always figure they should call it a waterfalling, because it denotes that it's like still going, and then once it like burns out and it doesn't flow anymore, you can call it a waterfell. I don't know. I always feel the need to contextualize things. The crew sets foot on the beautiful island and looks around. Just when Dolores finds some man-made debris and realizes this island is not as uninhabited as you may have first thought, you've got company. Smugglers, they come rushing towards you. Our secret island has been discovered. We've got to silence them, mateys. It seems they leave you no choice. Okay, he's also got killer sideburns. I'm jealous that I'm, I'm really upset I gotta kill somebody with such awesome sideburns. Well, you know, you gotta kill who you gotta kill. It's all part of being an adventurer. So... The We will get no bonus rewards. We will get no bonus rewards for any of these. So essentially, we are free to kick the shit out of our enemies as we so desire. I'm going to move into right here with her. We're going to use our battle cry real quick. In we go. Our Tyrannosaurus roar! Take out our enemies. We now have Provocative, which gives us 25 grit, which is going to give us 6 or 7. It'll give us, yeah, a 20% chance to evade the enemies. So that's pretty good. Definitely not going to complain about it. Some of these guys, actually, an aggressive temper seems to be able to take these guys out the quickest. Zappity, zappity, zappity. Ah, oh, one HP left. I'm going to have a wasted, actually. That'll work. I will shoot you with my random group insults. I'll make fun of your collective mothers together. I like how she does, like, a little dagger protecting booty dance when she sits there in her idle time. I don't know, it makes me happy. Shaky hips and all that. Ooh, there's a big healing spot up there, too. We might consider going over there. The healing butt cheeks. That's what it looks like to me. It looks kind of like cartoon butt cheeks from, like, Shin-Chan. Did you just try to shoot me? Oh, shit done got real now. I mean, when they were just trying to stab me, it was one thing. But now that they're trying to kill me, eh. We have to move this over slightly. The goalpost done moved. Ah, I destroy you with threats of electrocution. On this left-hand side. I mean, technically, I could just deride this guy and get him out of the way now. So let us deride him. Yeah, you say he said he looked like a monkey. He said he looked like a monkey. With the smuggler out of the way, your crew has enough time to hide the boat and to start exploring the island. Sadly, it seems this island is a smuggler's hideout. Better be careful. Ready to go. Anna leads the crew into adventure. Okay, so adventure is apparently awaiting us. We got two level ups, so Dolores Garcia. She can get confident roar. Dolores becomes more confident after using primal roar. Or we could go loud roar, which lowers their speech defense when we do that. I would say that one sounds better. The minus 20 is a, that's a lot of damage done to their 
to their defenses. So pinning strike gives us aggressive 125% attack. It pulls aggro, but it pins down the target, making it unable to move. Okay, that's kind of cool. That might work out. On this side, Anna Prescuria Kova. What do you have going on? We've got a perk upgrade, so we could take... Oh, she's got nothing. Terrifying process. Surrounding enemies gain one terrified a turn. Eh, that's okay. Or we can take extra study each time we get to a nature challenge. Both of these are kind of lackluster. Yeah, I guess we'll go with that one. I mean, I don't know. The, the minus one to their mood every time you walk around does not really entice me the way the other one does. So neither one is any good, but we'll take one over the other. The spot... Are you spotted nearby camp where smugglers are busy moving around crates? The cargo seems valuable. You really want to know what's in the crates, but you can't possibly take on all those smugglers if you could just infiltrate them. Apparently, I have nobody with infiltrate skills. A troop of pesky monkeys have been stalking you for hours. They're out to get your food, and they've already stolen Charles' marmalade sandwich. He looks pretty infuriated about it, too. Meanwhile, the monkey looks pretty stoked about the marmalade. Like, yeah, I had marmalade today. Pretty good day for me. Looking good for monkeys. Monkeys are on the up and up right now in the monkey exchange. Apparently this travesty against our sandwich related sundries can be suffered no longer. So into the fight we go with the monkeys. I think I'll probably have Charles block this way off over here. And then you can do whatever you like my friend. You can fight them by hand. You can fight them by insult. Whatever. He's got a really itchy armpit. I don't know why monkeys in this game always have such itchy armpits. But I assume that there must be some kind of random thing oh man that lowered my speech defense that sucks because these things use i think they heckle you or something like that pretty sure they do i'm gonna back up against this wall so that we don't have to deal with these enemies anytime soon we'll just deal with one at a time i don't think they can move that far so we should be all right yeah he's gonna attack us through the rock and so because we've lost speech defense right there gonna be problematic Step in over here, and can I win with friendliness, or can I win... See, mostly I can win by punching. And so I've got a hard decision in front of me right now. I'm going to win by punching, and I'm just going to try and finish this with minimal losses if I can. Make such a sad noise when you punch him to death. When was the last time you punched a monkey? That sounds like a sexual euphemism. Eh, I'm going to punch the monkey later. I don't know, I've been feeling pent up all day. Sometimes you got to punch a monkey. I don't know. I don't make the rules. And it's having a rough day. She can made fun of by monkeys all day. She can suffer their trespasses no longer. I believe I'll put you right there. And can we attack people at distance on any side? See, it's just so much more efficient to punch the monkey. They go down after one. They're so fragile. They're not. St they're so happy though in their little portrait. They make me like feel bad. I don't want to punch the monkey. They look so happy. Look at him. Look at his little face right there. Nobody wants to punch that monkey. I want that monkey to be my friend and get into shenanigans. Cartoon knick-knack shenanigans over and over and over again. Use deride or I can just raise somebody's mood. Let's raise somebody's mood. There's no point, but we'll raise the mood right now. It looks like it made her flattered, though, which is not good. Yeah, that's, that's really, really bad. <laughs> what insult? It possibly involves a snail. That could be just like that irritating to where you just be like, Argh! you would fall down from frustration at being compared to a snail. I'm having trouble thinking of any like snail related stereotypes. So we got some results right there. We won in combat. We got a little buff on her end too. So because it was aggressive, she got some more armor, a little bit of extra grit. I'm happy with it. Yay! Her ability will come into play. The ruins of a native village. The crew is curious about the details of its history, but Anna is cautious. 70% chance. Roll them bones. Shit. Oh, we lost half our supplies. That sucks. Alright, well, we've got a perfect success. With Ingenuity, she creates a gear improvement that will improve attack and armor, but only for this expedition. I give it to anybody that doesn't have buffs. There we go. I'd like to think... We could find some supplies around here somewhere, but we have a bonus to going anywhere that has a nature check, so... A ruined Spanish fort lies in front of an almost impassable jungle. Naturally, you need to go to the other side. Anna ponders the options. 
You can say, lead us through the jungle. We can investigate the fort for passage. And a 70% chance right there. Or we can have somebody lead us through the jungle, and Charles can do that. If we fail, we'll lose a bunch of supplies, though, and it's a 20%. What was the failure on the other one? We still lose. So we got a 70%. Versus an 80. Let's go with the 80, just in case. So Charles will lead us through the jungle, hopefully. Charles in charge. Charles, Charles in charge of our faith and our night. <laughs> amazing, Charles leads the way like a pioneer. I had to stretch. Just let it go. The crew finds an amazing number of rare beetles and plants. After studying for some time, you conclude their voyage through the jungle. Oh, cool. We got a bunch of study out of that one. Hey, we got a treasure on this side. I like treasure. As you, as you walk along a pearl white shoreline, some of the crew starts to develop an appetite for fresh fish. She finds Dolores spots an old fishing boat. You walk towards the boat. It doesn't look very seaworthy, but luckily there's a net next to it. You can still catch fish that are close to the shore. Who will use the net? Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll use Charles since he's got 87%. If you fail with 87%, buddy, the gambler's fallacy is going to force me to lose my shit on you. Charles catches a beautiful fish. Too beautiful to eat, really. You draw a picture and put it back. Fishing for fish near the shore with the net doesn't seem to be the most effective way, so Charles decides to turn over the boat to see if there's any more gear underneath it. Charles screams as loudly as possible there's a skeleton beneath the boat. He's a brave man who will fight you with his mustache and fists, but he just has no tolerance for skeletons. After a brief period of relief, the boat is lifted to take a closer look at what's underneath. You see a skeleton and determine it's female due to the feminine clothing. She's wearing a pretty necklace and holding a letter in her hands. Read the letter first. While taking the letter, a small piece of paper drops on the floor. You can look at it later. The letter is from the woman's boyfriend. It's very romantic and he tells her the jewelry is safely hidden and that in a few years, people will stop looking. Some of these sultry lines may come in handy during a campaign. Let's take the necklace. It's probably cursed. Charles, still a bit startled, takes the necklace and examines it. It appears to be part of an old Spanish royal jewelry set. You wonder if the skeleton is of a stranded royal family member. Hooray! I mean, we're about to starve to death, but we got a free necklace, so that's pretty cool. What else do you want to do? What's the little piece of paper? You pick up a small piece of paper. The following is written. 52 left, 13 right, 44 right. You're not sure what it is, but it's best to take it with you. Let me write that down real quick in case I can't use that ever again. Ugh, damn it, my pen fell underneath my desk and it's like... I don't know why people that design desks create these little alcoves that you can't get into if anything gets under there. Like, it's the worst. Whoever created this thing didn't think about that because there's like 10 pens up underneath there that I can't get now. For like the last year of me having this desk and doing all these recordings. So, 52L, 13R, and then 44R. Check it one more time. Okay, just to make sure. I screw up numbers all the time because my eyes see them funny and they'll like reverse letters and... I'm sorry, reverse numbers and move them around on me. So, I always check everything three or four times when it comes to numbers. Let's leave the skeleton in the boat. Finding the skeleton beneath the boat sure killed everybody's appetite for fish, but not their appetite for treasure. With a nice shiny necklace in your bag and a smile on your crew's faces, you continue exploring. Hey, we found some supplies. Hopefully we get enough down there. The crew finds some materials that can be used or find some materials that can be used to create gear and tools. The materials could also be studied. Let's go ahead and have her do it. I'd take the sure thing. Success! Anna has a stroke of inspiration on how to use the coconuts in just the right way. The result is some valuable experience and an excellent tool. Your next challenge will be much easier thanks to this single use tool. Okay, well, you know. It's always nice to have an excellent tool. I'm going to grab supplies down here, and we should always go to place with naturalist checks because they give us research and we get collect. A branch is hanging out, which gives you the possibility to take a shortcut. A balancing act is required to get to the other side and secure a rope for others to pass. Well, we have to do this. We don't really have a choice, so let's get in here. We succeeded. God, I hate it when I fail on challenges that I have a high percentage on. It makes me just cry. It makes my face turn red. To add to your fortune, he moves across the branch and secures patches. The next area is bountiful with gems and supplies. What an odd thing to store together. Be like, well, put the gems with the supplies, Gerald. You hear gunshots in the vicinity. You follow the sound and see a smuggler showing off or showing off a target shooting in front of other two smugglers. A bullet ricochets off a tree and hits Dolores, who cries out in shock. The smugglers turn towards you. They shot us. They shot us without even... It was an accident, though. Maybe we could talk this over? I don't know. It doesn't seem that important. 
So if we win aggressively, good things happen. I'm gonna throw a bomb. I don't even know what's in there. Hit, hit, nudge, nudge. It's P! So I'm gonna throw my P on my enemies. It's Jurati, and they've been defeated now. I've defeated them with my Jurati Karate. On this side, I'm gonna go ahead and AoE them again. No! I messed up. No, never mind. It got him. It worked. Q. And that should shift us over into Devious. Oh, really? Hostile makes us good right here. Oh, well, apparently being hostile does not debuff our... It doesn't debuff our speech defense, so that's good. Usually it does, so we'll just punch some people to death then. I will point out that they do have machetes, but I think we should be all good. Please don't shiv me. Ah, I've been shivved! Every adventure ends in a shiving. It's just what my mother told me before I went to become an adventurer. She said, if you go outside, jolly old, you will be, I assume that, anyways, we haven't really gotten to the Americas yet since none of the adventures are in America. And none of the characters are from America. Well, actually, she's from America. She's from Mexico. So, hmm, that's weird that none of the adventures are in the U.S. then. Or in Canada. Or in Mexico. Or South America. Huh. Didn't think about it till right now. Weird. You sure won't be using the explorers for target practice, or they sure won't be using explorers for target practice anytime soon. They look so bummed out. Okay, we won't shoot human beings anymore. You win. We only have one supply left, but there's so much more to explore. There's something odd here. We'll go ahead and do it then. What a great place to camp with a beautiful clean creek. Anna tells everybody to prepare for a comfortable day. The crew spends their day relaxing, but then something interesting happens. Somebody makes a nice gesture, as opposed to the mostly grotesque and horrible gestures we normally make that nobody really talks about. Anna surprises everyone. The crew notices that Anna is polishing something shiny. When asked about it, she reveals that it's an internationally acclaimed science prize that Anna earned just a few months ago. The crew is impressed. Charles suddenly becomes friendlier after learning that Anna is famous. That's weird. After a good day, the crew sits around a campfire and listens to one of Charles's great stories. The night becomes even more enjoyable when a delightful dinner is served by... Eh, let's have Charles cook and also tell stories. An unbelievable combination of Caribbean ingredients and flavors from the United Kingdom. The crew is delighted by the meal and Charles is a fantastic cook. On the downside, now Charles will have to endure the complaining of hungry crew members. You're out of supplies. You press on, but the situation is having severe effects on your crew members. And becomes frustrated. Oh, man. I thought that it would just make us lose resolve. I wasn't, like, that worried about it, but... Oh, minus 40 speech defense. Okay, let's finish off. We need to be done, like, right now. Finally, you find it. The Waterfall Rock. The treasure hidden by the notorious pirate, Captain Roche. Must be here somewhere. This is the goal of the expedition. Whatever happens here, it will end your expedition. Yes, we have to. I ran out of food because we got a bad test where we lost, like, five food off one of those challenges. So, unfortunately, it is what it is. What a fantastic sight. No wonder the pirate Captain Roche chose this place to bury his treasure. The crew starts to look for clues and signs of treasure under the peerless guidance of Anna. It seems it will take longer than expected. Someone might want to set up a defensive camp while the other crew members continue searching and digging. Yeah, let's have... Dolores do it. If we fail, it's gonna suck. But if we succeed... Ah, uh -huh. It looks like a bastion. Dolores creates a camp at a strategic location with a lookout and everything. Besides that, it was a great way to learn about the environment. To be prepared for hostilities that come your way. Yay, we got free stuff. That's good. To find the treasure, the crew spends hours looking for Roche's marks. The night passes and guard duties change while the crew works diligently to uncover secret treasure. It's not long the next morning until something happens. There's a trail of gold coins. Let's take that. I like gold coins. After hours and hours of searching and digging, Dolores' shovel finally hits a wooden chest. The crew opens it up to see the Spanish treasure in all its glory, surrounded by other precious pieces. The crew prepares to dig out Roche's treasure when you hear a deep laugh from behind. Ha ha! It's the smuggler boss! I heard these rats were on my island, but I didn't think they would be so kind as to find this treasure for me. Get your paws off my booty, landlubbers. It is... Every time I find a smuggler, I put my hands on his booty. It's true. He hurls a heavy object towards you. No, don't fling things at me. It's a ticking bomb. It's going to blow and take some treasures with it. Anna needs to take charge of the situation quickly. Succeed? Please don't fail with an 80%. I realize that's a 1 in 5, but if you fail me right now, I will still think you're awesome and dressed well and also attractive. With sweaty hands, Anna manages to defuse the old bomb. You were still able to secure some valuables before the boss comes in. Thank goodness we got some freebie treasures. Oh, look, it gave us a new card that I haven't seen before. The boss confronts you. It seems you won't go down with just an old sea mine. 
We'll show you what happens when you disrespect my territory. Fellas, get the treasure and crush these landlubbers. It seems as if there is no choice. All right, well, let me grab my shock prod here, and we'll see what we can get done. I wanted to look for anything tactical that would allow us. We can rid the island. It looks like they all do the same thing, so who cares? It looks like there's a tactical spot down here, a tic tactical spot, where we could hang out and possibly heal. So I'm going to take that right now. I'm going to punch this guy to death. Because, why not? Her bouffant hair bothers me. I don't know if it's bouffant. No, nope, it's a ponytail. Just a poofy ponytail. Devious abilities get better. So they're way the hell over there. We should have more than enough time to deal with these morons before anything else goes wrong. Like, hey, I'll have you know I am especially well-educated. I went to Oxford. Stab. And so there it is. You've been stabbed. Enjoy this shocking transmission of electrons, I suppose. And now, sir, I shall punch you repeatedly. On guard! I shall punch you until you fall, fiend! And so down he goes, and we've got a number of other random things going on. These guys all have gats, though. I'm gonna point that out. That all these guys, they're, they're coming with slugs, man. Coming with slugs. We gotta watch out. Damn, we just gotta drive by. Charles is hit! Charles is hit! Wave the bandana. Alright, so, Charles... I don't know if you want to spend a turn like healing and feeling better. But I'm going to punch this guy in the head. He's rocking those green colors, see? Gang warfare up in the Caribbean islands. You got to watch out for that shit. No joke. It gets real out here. It gets real out here in Jamrock. We'll go and turn right there. That should allow him a turn to heal so that you won't be quite so roughed up by the time the enemy gets here. These guys all have guns, so they're running around. I don't know if he just moved to a spot where he'll be able to get to us at the next turn. But I suppose that's going to be a risk that I'll have to take, considering I can't really... Well, I can sort of get to him. A little bit. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's get in there. I'm going to go with Deride, which will do... Oh, it makes him happy to be hit. He's a sadist like that, huh? Yeah, go ahead and use Deride then, and that's going to give him minus 25 armor, which means we can finish this violently, if we so choose. And so, once again, he's fallen back on calling somebody a monkey. And I think I will probably... Can we use anything devious from over here? Can we use anything friendly from over here? Guess go ahead and raise his mood since you can't afford to go anywhere else. Ah, he just farted flowers. That's how you know somebody's really, really happy. When they fart flowers, you know it's all over. I will probably... Oh, I don't know. Let's just keep everybody happy for right now continuing to poop flowers vociferously. I don't know if that's the word that I wanted, but I'm going to use it anyways because meh, it's never stopped me before from using words wrong. It's never stopped me before. You just slashed me with a machete, homie. You better figure it out. Oh no, you shot the lady. And I don't think she'll be able to get close enough by the end of the next turn. On this side, it's a good idea that we probably really dedicate to this violence over here. He's got minus 25 armor. So I really am feeling like it's a good idea to just shock this dude as hard as we can. We're going to use Pinning Strike on this side for a big ass hit. It's actually a... Oh! Belly Flop! That did 63 damage. That was pretty Narnar, actually. Oh, he's still not going to go down if I do that. Either way, we can survive another turn. I don't think anything's going to go wrong here. Ha ha! I punch you, knave! I imagine Charles is the kind of guy that'd be out in Africa with like a giant gun and a pith hat. Who would just think that everything was cheeky? That would be if he labels everything cheeky. Couple of gunshots over here, but she's been working out a lot lately, so she blocks it with her hands. And we should be able to end this one right here, which actually seemed a little bit easy, but whatever. Not a big deal. Down goes the foe, and that'll actually despawn all the other ones too. Oh, he's got a vein popping out the side of his head. I beat a vein out the side of that dude's head. Crazy. All right, well, looks like we got a couple of encounter tokens. The smugglers lie defeated at your feet. You know what? Lying is not nice. You should learn to tell the truth. They should truth defeat it at my feet. And it makes it clear that there's more of that to come if the smugglers don't leave this island quickly. The crew's physical prowess has intimidated the boss, and they run away vowing to leave you and the island alone. Without those irksome outlaws to bother, you can retrieve Rogue's treasure easily. Yay, we leave the island. We got a hundred renown from that right there. I still don't think we're going to win this one, though. We're going to have to hit it pretty hard on our two next expeditions if we want to win. 
It looks magnificent. The scent of gold fills the air. With Roche's treasure in your hand, the expedition is a success. You can proudly return to London in this old Spanish treasure. Well done. In fact, gold does not have a smell, though. That's one of the reasons why you use a gold spoon when you taste foods, like, for example, at Baskin Robbins. Then when they want to, when you have somebody with a good palate, that's why a lot of wine glasses have gold rims too and things like that because it doesn't affect the taste of the wine. I think it's a scentless metal as far as I remember. So the next expedition, the Carabine, we've completed it, so yay. So we found some treasures, that'll be cool. We might be able to get some renown out of this one, although I'm not really sure where our tabulation is going to end. A couple of big treasures right there, a bunch of research accomplished, so that'll be nice. We had a big old stack of research. And then our encounter tokens should allow us to get that almost up to 400 right now, but we got a bunch of gold, which is the most important part. So we're up to 7th place right now. I mean, we could leapfrog it. We gotta have really, really good adventures, though, if we want to go any further. Let's close that on down, and I will see you all in the next episode. This is Renowned Explorers. Hi-do, everybody. Yeah.